Okay, today's video, we're gonna talk about Shopify audiences and do a Shopify audience review. Does it work? Does it not work? Is it worth the $2,000 a month that you gotta pay for Shopify Premium, or Shopify Plus, sorry, in order to start using it on your Google Ads as well as your Facebook Ads account to get you more sales? Does it get you an ROI? I'm gonna cover exactly whether or not it gets you an ROI, which is the answer is it depends, but unlike what you know other people do and they say it depends, I'm gonna give you real examples here of companies, types of niches where it does work and it doesn't work. So you kind of basically know, will this work for your space that you're in or won't it? And I'll also explain why it is that it won't work in those situations where it won't work as well as what why it does work in those situations where it does work. So. I'm gonna cover all this for you. Of course, this can make you millions of dollars. You can make nothing at all with it. If you're in the right space, you're in the right market, it can clean up. I'll tell you if you're in that market or not. Regardless of the situation, Shopify Plus, you know, you may be looking at Shopify Plus as the main things that it delivers to you that you can't get with regular Shopify is you get Shopify audiences and you get cart customization which are the two main selling features of it to pay, to pay that extra two grand a month. So does Shopify audiences make it worth it? Well, I'll start off by saying that Shopify audiences, again, only work in certain markets, which I'm gonna cover. But if you're doing kind of like, as a side here, like over $300,000 a month in, in monthly revenue at your company and you're profitable, I would say that you get Shopify Plus regardless or despite what I tell you whether or not Shopify audiences will work for your brand or not, simply because you could uh, customize that shopping cart. That shopping cart is not set up to the, the most ideal way to maximize conversions and reduce cart abandonment rates. The top retailers don't use Shop regular Shopify with no customization of the cart because it's unideal. You go to the big, big retailers, you know, outside of like Amazon, eBay, that kind of thing. You'll see they have like these trust symbols on the checkout, like a big picture of a padlock and it'll say site secure, you know, it's basically mostly bullshit, but it gives the user like a, a nice warm, fuzzy feeling looking at it saying, oh, this site's really, uh, not only just secure, but this is a legit website that cares. They care about the security. They're not going to rip me off ultimately. I'm not, I don't have anything ultimately to worry about. But you can't do that with regular Shopify. So when you add that to your checkout, that may certainly reduce your cart abandonment rates by a good 10, 20%, which, you know, respectively, that's not going to tip your, the scales on your revenue that much. But when you're talking about selling 500,000 a month and you could pick up an extra 20% of the people that get to your cart to buy, now we're talking about you know, basically another five to 10K a month in revenue for free. They just simply did not have to pay another dollar for it to get. And then it becomes, starts to become worth it. Then if you add the Shopify audiences to the mix, it really becomes worth it. So if you're over a certain threshold, you get it anyway, basically you customize that cart, you streamline it, you put trust symbols on it, more than just trust symbols, you, you just streamline it for your niche. What, there's other small things I won't get into because it's not the topic of this video to cover that, but there's many ways to actually reduce cart abandonment rates on your shopping cart. The, the, default, you know, the default shopping cart on Shopify was not created for conversions. It was created to help Shopify make the most money, which is to standardize everything and not overcomplicate it and make it work for literally any type of business. Well, in the niche you're in, there's certain things that'll work for your niche that will work better for your niche than it will work for every other business on the planet. So anyway, besides that, you know, Shopify audiences do work if you're in the right business, as I mentioned before, namely big, clearly defined niches, preferably with return customers in them. Why is that? Problem with lookalike audiences that you know, the Shopify audiences are doing, they're providing lookalike audiences in, in Google ads effectively in Google, uh, in Facebook, is they don't work well without lots and lots of data. So if you don't have lots of really big competitors, preferably who buy repeatedly from them, 
Shopify audiences, is it going to help you? You know, you can get, so if you're the biggest one in your niche, in other words, and you have some small competitors, you probably can do better with the lookalikes targeting you can do in Facebook, for instance, and get more sales that way than Shopify's lookalikes, which is not going to be as good as Facebook's, you know, with the, you know, head to head, if you will, because Shopify's algorithm is just not going to be, there's not as much time and money and effort invested into that. So, uh, however, if you are a small fish in a really big pond, it can actually work really, really well. To give you some examples of where this can work well, we did uh, in women's plus size clothing, using the Shopify audiences in that niche works extremely well. Why is that? Well, this particular client wasn't the biggest one in their niche, and there's some really big players in that niche. Some of you use, uh, which use Shopify, some not, of course, which is part of the reason why you need really big, a really big niche for this to happen because there's a percentage of your competitors who aren't on Shopify, which is, that's not going to help you then for those competitors. But in that particular case, that's a really big niche. People, there's a lot of traffic, a lot of sales going on in that niche. And it also has that repeat customer aspect to it, which that's where Shopify audiences really shine in that they can see who buys. And in the world of marketing and advertising, if you can get your hands on a list of people, of actual buyers in your space, that's actually what's really profitable. Not knowing somebody who gets to a website and then bounces. Even though who, goes, who gets to the website, a certain percentage of those people are customers. As far as machine learning and algorithms go and similar audiences go, you, where the real, real money comes in is having, you know, the, the big, really profitable results is having you know, 100,000 to a million customers to look at and then look at the traits of the customers versus just people who hit the site. Even though people who hit the site actually can do okay in quite a few situations as well, but it's not as good as looking at the actual customer data. So respectively in that space, it did well. We did well using it in the restaurant supplies industry. Specifically, as you know, with Shopify audience, or if you don't, you can only create lookalike audiences Shopify audience is based upon single items that you're selling. Well, if you have a clearly defined item like a Wolf Range 2816, the Shopify audience's system slash algorithm understands exactly what that product is. So when they see all the other people on the shop on their platform that also are selling that, they know exactly who's the competitors that are selling that item and, and, to, and to have a one-to-one -one match there. If you sell some random unbranded product, how are they gonna find customers that'll like your customers? When the, there is no customers like your customers legitimately. So if you're, so in other words, if you're selling branded items, defined branded items like that, it can work really well, particularly when there's 50 other people selling that branded item. It's a really good way to make money, Shopify audience, uh, audiences. Another case where it worked extremely well was going along with that general theme is in the flat screen TV space. We had somebody selling, reselling TVs that, you know, returns and that kind of thing. Worked really well in that case because again, a TV, you know, a Samsung XYZ model TV, anybody else selling that TV, it, can, it knows exactly what, you know, what person your ad should get in front of. And when you're the small guy in the big pond, of course, what you ultimately are doing here is you're capitalizing on the advertising of the big advertiser. They're spending all this money doing things that build an audience in your niche, and then you're just getting in front of that person at the last second. That's why you can get a good return from it. On the flip side, you're talking a couple companies where I've seen it used. I personally probably wouldn't have used it myself, but I've seen it used and it failed to give you some examples of the other side. Massage supplies, guy sold massage supplies, tables, the oils, all that stuff that massage clinics need. And it was so, so in that space, mainly because there are repeat buyers in that space, but it's not a huge, huge industry, right? There's only so many massage places and they only need to reorder so many times and they only actually need to go back to the site to reorder so many times. So you're not working off of the big numbers like some of these other bigger niches. So that's why I said, from what I personally witnessed already, the bigger the niche, the better the results, okay? And then going further here, uh, where we were selling a custom mailbox, we thought potentially that th this could work, you know, getting in front of other people looking for custom mailboxes. But that niche is so, first of all, it's not that big of a niche. And then secondly, 
the products that people are looking at, there's so much differentiation between one product and another, the algorithm didn't do, to do a very good job of getting in, us in front of the customers that were profitable. So in that case, it was a, a very unsuccessful, whereas the massage supplies at least halfway worked. Because if you're looking for a massage oil for your clinic, it's not that much different from another massage oil, but you're talking about a custom product. You're basically, the algorithm's not going to know who the hell they, they should build an audience from in that case, like I was telling you before. So again, if you're the small fish in the big pond, you sell something that many other people sell, either you know, the, the exact same thing you sell or something very, very similar to it, enough to where the algorithm should have not a hard time identifying what your product exactly is and what the competitor's product exactly is and how your product matches up with that one, i.e. a massage oil, if you put that on the product name and then the other competitors have massage oil on their products and if they put massage oil on their products, they pretty much, the algorithm knows and it would be correct by assuming anything with massage oil on it as well is you know, the people that you would want to get in front of, then you could be successful. Whereas it, once you start to obscure like what your product name is specifically and like what it does and that not being a direct one-to-one -one match to what, how other people in your category market their stuff, the algorithm's just gonna get confused you're not gonna get anywhere as per what we found. So as far as though the lookalike audiences, Shopify audiences if you will, like I said, you could use those on Google and you can use them on Facebook. With Google getting rid of uh, similar audiences, it's actually a pretty good replacement for it. But again, Google had a lot of customer data and a lot of data that Shopify doesn't have. Compared, you think Shopify has a lot of data? Google has a thousand times more data, customer data, or 10,000 times more. So unless you're in a big space, it's just not enough data that they have on their users to really, really help you out. But it can be really helpful because, again, they don't have uh, similar audiences anymore, which is the shame because the replacements for similar audiences on Google aren't nearly as good as similar audiences were in the beginning. You could also use uh, Shopify audiences on Facebook, which can work really well, like I said, if you're in the unique case, uh, markets where the, it can basically work. Uh, on Google, going back to that, you can use the Shopify audiences to power dis regular display campaigns and YouTube campaigns. And YouTube campaigns are actually quite a bit more profitable than display campaigns are nowadays. So if you aren't doing either and you want to start doing them with the Shopify audiences, I recommend doing it through YouTube specifically. So there's that. And uh, of course, you have to create the similar audiences based upon individual items. So what I would recommend to you to do if you are going to you know, jump in with both feet is to run separate audiences based upon each item and just f figure out which of the items built, you know, get you the best results. Go churn through all of them if you can or quite a few it, in and itself. Now one of the other downsides I'm sure you've read but if you haven't picked up what's going on here as I mentioned before if you're the small fish in the big pond, okay? You're using the competitor's marketing budget to your advantage. They're spending all the money you're, you're picking off their customers. On the flip side, if you're the big fish in the big pond and you opt into the Shopify audiences, you're actually agreeing when signing up for Shopify audiences to share all your customer data and usage data on your website and all your customers that buy from you and giving it all to the other people that signed up, signed up for similar uh, Shopify audiences as well. So it can actually work against you. Is it worth a few extra sales to give away all your customer data to all your little literal uh, smaller competitors who are trying to do nothing else besides pick off a few customers that you've built you spent tons of money to build awareness of in your market, you may be better off just not doing it for that fact alone that you don't want to give away your data, okay? So uh, there's that as well, per se, to, to, you know, something else to ponder whether or not you actually want, to, is, it, is Shopify audiences really worth doing for your company? So uh, <clears throat> respectively, so can they do, to sum this up, can, uh, if you're into like doing Facebook, will Shopify audiences do better than Facebook lookalike audiences? Yes, they can do better if you're in a big space, specifically because the one advantage that 
Shopify's data that has that Facebook doesn't have, uh, for the most part, is more customer data, if you will, it, or at least a lot of customer data that Facebook doesn't have. If you put a tracking pixel from your Facebook ads on your website, Facebook also has the customer data who buys in that niche as well. So Shopify is not so unique in that, but they don't have all the customers' uh, data, you know, because if your competitor doesn't run Facebook ads, then they don't have access to some competitor's data. And, and by running Shopify audiences, you're actually able to expand what you're doing. So, you know, head to head, you know, the lookalike audiences, they're a little bit better than the lookalike audiences that, you know, the Shopify audiences can do a little bit better on average, as we found, than the lookalike audiences, but it's not a huge margin. What it's more so better at doing is giving you access to like an expanded, you know, lookalikes audiences on Facebook will only get you so far. It'll expand what you can do with lookalike audiences, get you more sales at the same or similar ROI than just get you much, much greater ROI as a whole, uh, so to say. And um, so, and then obviously, like I said, if you're a small fish and you're trying to become the big fish, it's great because you could just let your competitor spend all that money, build an audience, and then you market to people who've already made it to their site. That's specifically how you make a return from a small budget turn into a, you know, so you can reinvest into a bigger budget and a bigger budget and a bigger budget. And that's what you want to do. And then for when you're talking about Google specifically, of course, there's, you know, like if you're advertising on Google Display Network and you're talking about uh, YouTube advertising, the Shopify audiences won't typically do better than the default targeting options. But at a certain point, the default targeting options where you can actually market to people that are in market for what you have to sell directly, like such as on Facebook, if you sell uh, massage supplies, you can type in, you know, what type of massage supplies should I buy for my massage business and target those people directly. That's going to be better than the Shopify audiences. But at some point, and you could also target people looking for some, if they've searched for massage supplies on Google in the recent past, you can have your video ad show up for them after they get, while they're on YouTube. And that would be better than Shopify audiences. But at a certain point, you pick all that low hanging fruit, you want to expand further, the Shopify audiences are going to come in handy because it's going to get you in front of all the people that are on your competitor site, specifically the repeat customers that you really want to get access to. Even though I said it didn't work that, it basically was like break even. It was like in the middle of good and bad for that particular market. But you get my general idea of what can go on, what, what's going on there per se. Uh, so to say, and uh, respectively, you can use the, um, you know, in that massage market, just to, which is a really good, good example of a, of a situation where you could take something that could work and make it do work. You run the Shopify audience on that display campaign, on that YouTube campaign, and you run a combined segment taking that Shopify audience in combination with other things that would that you know about your customers that most of your customers already have and then you could take a campaign that's break even to profitable or maybe you find out through your past looking at your past data that marketing to males is mostly unprofitable so you take the shopify um, audience that you have you combine that with female only targeting and then now your shopify audience that you have now will be bring you an acceptable ROI for your brand. So that's how I would recommend handling that type of situation. So anyway, with that said, I pretty much cover the basics here, whether or not it's worth it or not. Works for a lot of businesses. Uh, the more of these individual things that you have, small fish in a big pond, you know, have clearly defined items, uh, <clears throat> have repeat customers, the more likely it is to work. And then again, you can work with combining other targeting options with your audiences and maybe get those to work even better. Might take a little bit of massaging and some extra work. It's not gonna be a panacea where you click one button and you're done all in it itself or by itself. But uh, anyway, through the combination of meeting more of those initial requirements that where, biz where it normally works better and with some additional footwork to get it to work once you've set it up in your campaigns, you can get it to work for your brand and make it worth it for you at the end of the day. So I'll wrap it up with that. <clears throat> if you liked the video, I have a ton of other videos on this channel, but other money-making strategies as it comes to advertising on Google, Facebook, Bing, LinkedIn, so on and so forth, coming directly from myself who manages and strategizes ad accounts all day long for different clients. And we have dozens of clients that we serve. 
in which, in which we actually have to guarantee results for our clients to get paid. So the stuff that we use to guarantee results for our clients, we're giving to you here directly on this channel. So with that, it's the best information you're gonna find on YouTube, on the web, so on and so forth, because most of the information you see comes from professional YouTubers and so forth, not somebody who just does strategy on ad accounts all day. So you should subscribe because everything you need really is on this channel. I also have a blog at guaranteeppc.com slash blog, where if you want written material for myself and, and examples, you can find material for myself there, as well as on my uh, column on entrepreneur.com. You can also see written material from myself as well. If you have any questions about anything I covered here today, leave me a comment below. I get back to every single person who leaves me a comment on this channel and try to answer your questions about the topics at hand or any PPC related questions as best as I can because I like to help help out and give back to my viewers. If you like the video, I'd also appreciate you would give it a like. And if you are looking for somebody to help you do this stuff here, uh, th do the strategies that I talked about here, or just make you some money on your ad accounts, reach out to my firm. I will gladly look over your stuff and see if we can work together. I don't work with just any client, but you have something really great that looks like it could do well that just needs the proper advertising strategy bolted onto it. I'd love to see how much, uh, you know, I'll estimate how much sales results I can give to you and let you know what can be done with it. And uh, we don't take fees before we get you more profit on your campaigns. We're the only firm out there doing that. So reach out to me at my firm at guaranteedppc.com. I'd be happy to hear from you and look at what you have at the very least. And, uh, and, and for me to look at your stuff, that doesn't have any cost. So and beyond that, if you're looking not for an ad agency or anything, anybody to manage your campaigns long-term, as some of you guys don't want that, uh, we also offer campaign templates that work for certain markets. If we've worked in your market and gotten results in it already, if you don't want to work with an agency, you could just take our ads, campaign templates, landing page templates that work for your market, and we sell those for a one-time fee to get good results in your market as well. And we could tell you what results we got in your market before you use those. Uh, campaign templates and so forth in your market as well. So if you're interested in that, also reach out to my firm at guaranteeppc.com. I'd be happy to tell you what we have available for your market if we have something available. I'll wrap it up with that. Hopefully you enjoyed this video and I hope to see you on my next video where we have another great strategy for you then. See you later.